Hey guys, Level Cap here, and welcome to devlog number 33 for a space game that I'm making with my buddy Rich and a small community team. Today, I'm excited to show you guys some real progress that we've made on a material system that's giving us a glimpse into what potentially a final ship could look like in this game, and it's very exciting that we've been able to hit such a high visual quality. We've also got some cool model progress in the works. Rich has built out the foundation for a mission system. We can actually accept a mission in the game now, which is really exciting. And we have some updates to our movement system with some fixes to some frame rate based issues that we're having where ships would move quicker or turn quicker based on your frame rate, which was not ideal. So let's get into this. Last devlog, I showed you guys our layered material system, which was a decent starting place. However, this devlog, we've made some progress. Or rather, John Lagostini, our technical artist, has made huge improvements to give us much more realistic metallic and painted metals and wear materials that are just taking the look of our spaceships to the next level and so much closer to the concept art. And we're still not final with this yet, but what's so nice about this material system is that it's going to give us much more customization in engine than I ever would have thought possible. We have total control over the materials and colors of each masked region of the ship. We can dynamically scale the edge wear and the grime level of ships. We can add as much dynamic text as we want to the ship and have that text exist below grime layers so that it fades into the style and paint of the ship. This means that we'll be able to make skins and variations of ships much easier in engine on the fly without having to go out into Blender and Substance Painter and re-export and redesign a lot of these assets. And because this material layer system uses tiling materials, we can actually use smaller resolution materials that are going to hold up at better fidelity in close range. The station's using a series of 4K materials where the ship is actually using lower resolution materials to get finer details. So we'll be redoing the station with this new material layered system soon, and I can't wait. I've also been using it to prototype some new cargo types. These would be little credit cubes that you would pick up in space. I wanted to make them kind of gold or shiny, so I put a bunch of yellow lights on them so they are immediately recognizable. Um, the ammo containers are old material, but then we've got this blue kind of worn tech container and then a larger cargo container that we'll be using for different assets down the road, but all made very quickly and very easily with this new system. Now, I also wanna give a shout out to Johnny Popcorn, who's been killing it with some new spaceship models. I can't wait to get this one in the game. This would be a size three cargo ship based on Island's concept art, and the model's really coming along. It's hopefully we'll get it in game next week and I can start playing around with materials and some of those fun retro rockets on the front. The details on the ship are really fun. Loving the engines, loving the size of it. Uh, I can't wait to see how it feels flying something a bit bigger in game. We've also got another one of Island's concepts almost finished here. This would be kind of a larger size one cargo ship with a few more options. It's going to go through a few little changes and we'll have variations of this one as well once it gets in game. But uh, I'm also really enjoying the look of this ship. Now, Rich, who you've seen in many other devlogs, who is the tech lead on the project, has been deep into UI and mission systems for quite a while. Thanks to a suggestion from someone in Discord, we started poking around in the Lyra project, which is a free Unreal project designed kind of around third person and first person shooters. But the menu system and a lot of the foundational tech in that is built for AAA game development, which means the UI system that they made uses an incredibly adaptive material system. That means we don't have to upload any images or textures or anything. It's all controllable through extremely smart shader math. Rich dove into this pretty hard, figuring out how a lot of the system works and adapting it to our user interface. 
So the backgrounds, the borders, the mouse over effects, the color changing when clicking a button, that is all coming from the Lyra shaders. And here is pretty much the first look at what will probably be the foundation of our user interface using a lot of that Lyra tech under the hood. Uh, we've got a tab system. The left panel here would be for interacting at stations where the right panel will be player related things like your ship inventory, character progression. All that stuff will be located on the right side. It's kind of similar to a bunch of other action RPGs. We have the job board over here as well, which I'm very excited about because this is the beginning of our mission system. And in fact, when you accept this filtration delivery run, you get a filtration unit in your inventory. It's actually a cryostasis pod, but we needed an icon for the mission. And basically that's the beginning. The game has almost got a working mission in it, which I am very excited about because that's gonna set the foundation for things moving forward. Rich has also done a huge amount of work for our mission tech, which we'll probably get further into in a future devlog. This has been a huge amount of behind the scenes work to get both the UI working, the beginnings of a mission system. It's really exciting for me because it means we can actually have a gameplay, a reward system coming into the game soon. So thank you, Rich, for doing so much awesome work the last couple of weeks. I can't wait to see what the next few look like. Now, behind the scenes, we have Mr. Meteor, who is a programmer working on the movement physics for the game. Sometimes it's hard to appreciate just how much work goes into troubleshooting, fixing issues, and little things that actually have huge impacts on the game, but visually you might not notice immediately. A big problem with the movement system is that we discovered some inconsistencies in the movement speeds depending on the frame rate of the game. Obviously, Obviously, this is a huge issue for being able to balance any sort of consistent feeling with the game. So it had to be fixed and Meteor went through a pretty extensive trial and error and exploration of basically offloading the physics calculations to a different thread, which is a new way of doing async physics in Unreal Engine 5. And initially it fixed some problems, but then we started to run into issues when the frame rate got too fast and there was more inconsistency there. After messing around with a bunch of more settings and swapping out Add Force to Add Impulse, Meteor was able to get things working a little bit smoother, but uh, there was also about another two weeks worth of him also figuring out inertia issues, which might actually actually be due to some way that Unreal is kind of approximating physics calculations, which are throwing things off. He's posted it in the Unreal forums and we're kind of waiting to hear back on that. But basically designing this movement system to be based around physics means we got to get all that physics math right. And it's been a headache, not for me, but for him. And uh, I just want to give him a big thank you for muscling through a lot of that trial and error. So we've been making great progress on all fronts. Shout out to all the community members who have really been putting in the hours and figuring out and troubleshooting elements of the game. Game dev is hard. There's a lot of troubleshooting, trial and error, but it's also really fun and rewarding at the same time. And thank you to the community members over on Discord who are always there to provide suggestions and help troubleshoot ideas and approaches for new systems. If you guys want to jump into the Discord community. There's a link in the video description. It's a great way to follow along with the game and see other updates and things that we're working on uh, in between devlogs. And if you're new around here and want to check out some past devlogs, check out the playlist here. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.